Hey everyone, so this is going to be the third video in network automation. First we learn why we need to automate, what we need to automate and the strategies of automation. And we also understood the REST API. If you haven't checked that video out, you can click on this link. The second video, we understood how we use Python to get data from our device using REST APIs. If you haven't seen that video, you can click on here. Now today what we are going to learn is how we're going to update a configuration on a device using REST APIs, obviously through Python. Then we're going to understand how we're going to add a configuration and how do we delete a configuration. So this will complete a stack of REST APIs. So let's get into our system and let's start working on it. So what you see on the screen is the code that we built in the last video. Now we are not going to be exactly using this code, but we would want to take reference and it will be easier for you to cut copy paste certain parts of it. So let's just comment it out. You can comment it out by selecting all the code and by doing three single inverted commas. By putting the code between three single inverted commas, the Python will comment out the code. Either this or you can put hash on every line. So since this is the whole paragraph, let's just comment the whole thing out. So let's just copy paste certain parts of it. Let's just pick up username, password and the URL section and copy paste it here. We are not going to be requesting an input. Let's just do a static thing right now. So our username is API. That is the username of my HTTPS connection or the user of my router. So you need to change this according to you and the password that my router is using right now is networking 062. The next part is uh, we need to change this. So instead of putting the variable of IP address here, I'm going to input the IP address of my router here. You need to input the IP address of your router on which you're going to make the REST API request. Great. So the next input that we need to give is the response input so let's just copy it here and paste it here so let's first find out what are the interfaces available on our router so if you remember from the last time what we need to do is we need to print this response dot json and let's see the interfaces that we get okay so we have got the responses uh, but again the response has all come in single line so remember the last time, let's wrap this under json.dumps method and uh, let's show this in a proper way so that we can at least read it. Let's indent it by four and let's run this code again. Great, so now we have got all the list of interfaces and currently we have one, two, three, and four interfaces. So interface star one is WAN, commented as WAN, it's ether one, type is ethernet. Interface number two, that is star two, is a bridge interface apparently by the name bridge one. Interface star C is gogu by type bridge. Interface star D is VLAN one, which is type VLAN. So these are all the interfaces available. So let's do one thing. We don't need interface VLAN 1 and uh, the interface ID here is star D. So what we need to do here is we need to remove interface VLAN 1. So let's comment out this section of the code that we don't need right now. And let's copy this response. We are going to reuse it and uh, we're going to make certain changes to it. So the first change that we are going to do is we are going to change the method that we are going to use. Instead of get, we are now going to use delete. If you remember the documentation of REST API of Mikrotik, you'll remember that delete works like this. That is, we need to send the object ID as a part of the URL. So in our case, we want to delete interface VLAN. So we are going to have to append interface VLAN here and we are going to send the object ID star D. And 
to understand what is happening in the background let's do one more thing let's print out response dot status code because when we hit the delete api method we don't get any json response back we just understand if everything has gone well if the status code is 204 so let's see what status code we receive here and we have got a status code 204 which indicates that everything has gone well to check this out let's do one more thing let's get all the interfaces again and this time around the status code should come as 400 because there is no more interface vlan which exists with id star d so the status code here should be 400 and we should get a response of all the interfaces but all the interfaces that we are going to receive is going to be minus the vlan interface that we received from our first get response so let's print this out also with indentation so let's copy paste this statement also and let's see what happens so our code has run and we have got a 404 as expected the interface does not exist the interface that exists is star 1 which is the ethernet star 2 which is the bridge and star c which is also the bridge and that's it the vlan interface does not exist anymore so great so now we understand how to delete the interface which we did not need it so now let's do one more thing and let's try to add an interface now so again let's remove these two lines we'll use it sometime later and instead of this let's do a put so again go back to the microtech documentation and we see what to do in put in put what we need to do is we need to hit the endpoint and we need to send the data in json format so what we'll do here is we'll send the data that we need to add an interface vlan so we'll hit the endpoint url interface vlan our url is the ip address slash rest and we are going to give it a data which says that we want to add a vlan interface with name api so our name is going to be api vlan id that we want to do is 100 and interface should be ether1 this is the information that we need to put but to do this we need to send data in json format this is the only way that microtech router os v7 rest api endpoint will understand so to send this data in json format we are going to use module json and method dumps so what this method dumps does is it changes the python object to a json object that the router will understand if we are going to send just a python object the router will not understand it and we are going to get an error back so we need that the router should understand this and the router should process it properly so you can go through the documentation of json dumps and you will understand more why we need to do this and you will understand that this basically converts the python object into an appropriate json object so let's do that so let's send our data in json.dumps and json.dumps method we are going to send in curly braces and curly braces we are going to send first the key so let's define the key name and the value of that key is api then comma the next key and value is that we want the vlan id to be 100 so let's define that the vlan id has to be 100 so let's put that also in inverted commas and comma the next thing that we need to do is we want the interface on which this VLAN is to be created is Ether1. So interface is Ether1. Great. So this time around, let's print 
the JSON response that we get from our router. And as always, what we are going to do is we are going to wrap this in JSON format, just as JSON dot dumps format, so that we can understand the response that is coming back from the router. So let's just send this data and see what happens. So we got an error 400. It seems that there is some problem with the resource identifier. I have put an extra slash at the end of VLAN, which was not supposed to be there. So let's try this again. And perfect. So this time around, we got a JSON object back, which said that a new interface with ID star 14 has been created. And it has been created on interface ether1. The name is API as we wanted and the VLAN ID as we wanted is 100. So great. So now we have been able to delete an object and we have been able to add an object. So let's do one more task here and let's update this interface name to something more meaningful like customer at VLAN 100 or something like that. Or let's just rename it to VLAN 100 so that we understand what we are doing. So to update the object, let's look at the Microtech manual once again. And this time around, we are going to use patch method. And what we are going to patch is the data name. And again, if you see the methodology used is the same, that we are going to be hitting the endpoint, which has the identifier of the object that we want to change in this case is our interface vlan with identifier star 14 as here and what we are going to change is the name so let's change this to star 14 this is going to be the endpoint the method is going to be patch and the data this time around we just need to send the name here we don't need to send the vlan id or the interface because we don't want to change that we just want to change the name from api to vlan 100 and let's just see what the response is going to be this time around so great we have got another json object back and this time around what we have been able to do is change the id star 14 vlan name from api to vlan 100 so these were the basic building blocks which you can use to now build your scripts whether it is to retrieve information from multiple routers or whether it is to upgrade multiple routers all in one go of the latest firmware that has released so i hope that you learned something from today's video so in the upcoming video what we are going to do rest api is a feature that is not available on all the devices but there's something commonly available in all the devices that is telnet and ssh so we're going to leverage these two protocols and we're going to use again python and see how we can automate using telnet and ssh so stick around and keep watching the channel if you haven't subscribed till now please do subscribe do comment below and let me know what you're thinking about this series and what you would want to see and till we meet the next time Goodbye.